How's everybody doing? Good. You guys ready for part two? All right, should we get the energy going in here? Set the, set the tone, set the intention? All right, I got a love tuner. Who knows what this is? It's the world's most expensive small crappy harmonica. Uh, but in addition to that, it, it, it produces a 528 hertz signal. Everybody stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up. Stand up, get the energy going. Oh boy, okay. So if you're familiar with alming, we're gonna do this all together. We're gonna fill this room with an amazing vibratory frequency of 528 hertz. So I'm gonna blow on this and then we're just gonna take a deep breath and we're gonna hum. All right, here we go. And just like yesterday, start to bounce, start to bounce, start to bounce. It's called a love tuner, by the way. Bounce, bounce. It can be used to defend yourself against angry dogs as well. Take a deep breath in. And uh, shake it all. Everybody looks like a freak, but we're all doing this together. And deep breath in. Sometimes I do this in the morning. I'll do this in the morning sometimes for like 10 minutes. Deep breath in. <laughs> Try it sometime for 10 minutes and you're gonna feel amazing. Let's do two more. Deep breath in. <laughs> you guys look amazing. I wish I could get a photo of you. One more. <laughs> Give yourselves a big hand. Give yourselves a big hand. All right, let's do this. Let's do this. Oh my gosh, yesterday, I, 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 I honestly, for those of you who weren't here, I made it halfway through my presentation. We had to cut it off, but I thought, well, it's lucky because we're, we're doing another session today. So I promise I'll try to leave a little bit of time for Q&A today. And that we had just gotten through the, through the early morning and the morning and the work morning and the, and the lunchtime, and I was just about to jump into what brand of cigarettes I smoke after lunch, and whether it's, it's, it's gin or vodka in my post-lunch cocktail. I'm just kidding. It's actually cigars and, and tequila. Uh, those, those are the two that I go with. Okay, so we talked about how to biohack the, the nap and give yourself a little second day, a little siesta, or even a self-hypnosis session or a meditation session. Big fan of this. I always cut lunch a little bit short so I can squeeze in a new calm session or do a brain tap session or, or just lay there really natural and do like a yoga nidra body scan session. Anybody in here like a siesta fan, a siesta junkie like I am? Oh, my goodness. If you don't, if you don't do it, like you got to tap into that because like – my, my mantra is more productive and impactful things happen early in the morning than late at night. And I live my life by that. People are like, well, how, do you, how are you so hyperproductive? Probably two things that I do for productivity. I don't watch any TV. I'm a total dummy. People talk about movies and they'll quote movies and I'm just, like, I have no clue what's going on in TV and Hollywood and movies. And then the other thing is that I live my life by, the, by basically the idea that not a whole lot of purposeful, impactful things happen in the evening. So I usually go to bed like, like 9.30 or 10, but then I get up when, when the world is ready for action. 4.30, 4.45, 5, right around in there. No alarm clock, just use natural light to wake myself. I've trained my circadian rhythm to become awake and alert at that time, but inevitably, you get tired. You get tired, and the best time to take a nap is typically somewhere between about six to nine hours after you've woken, and so about 1.32 p.m. is perfect to duck in if you're going to be this early morning person. The interesting thing is like 20, 30 minutes of yoga nidra or brain tap or new calm. I would say those are the top three that I use can simulate an hour and a half long sleep cycle, right? So if you're like me and you're sleeping, oh, six and a half, seven hours a night, then what happens is you, you can get an extra equivalent of an hour and a half with a little 20-minute hacked nap later on after lunch. It's a real, real good way to be purposeful. I would, I would just be totally pleased if everybody walked out of here knowing how they could be more productive with their day because it, it makes, you know, a couple hundred more of us not flipping through Netflix at night instead of waking up and changing the world in the morning, all right? Who's with me on that? Change the world in the morning? All right. All right. I'm going to be I'm gonna be texting every single one of you at 4.30 tomorrow morning. Make sure you're awake. Meet me in the gym. 
All right, so, uh, so what do I do when I wake up? What do I do when I wake up? So, uh, and again, this is, a, this is a talk I haven't given before. I'm telling you guys all the new stuff. I didn't used to do this. I do it now. I do a cold plunge in the afternoon. I do a cold plunge or I go, if it, you know, if I'm traveling and stuff, it's a cold shower. So as soon as I get up from that nap, before I take any stimulants, before I do anything that I might need in terms of caffeine, yerba mate, uh, you know, any of these nootropics or smart drugs, etc., I instead naturally wake my body with cold. After the cold, if I feel like I still need a little bit of a pick-me-up. I'll use a little bit of a pick-me-up. If I do the cold plunge, I'll usually bounce up and down like we just did, or else I'll jump up and down on the rebounder. I'll do a little bit of pulse electromagnetic field frequency, like stand on a mat just for about five minutes to wake myself up. A good, good frequency for that is about 7.8 hertz if you have one of these PEMF machines. And then I use this device. This is a new one I've been using. Anybody see the InfoPathy before? It's fantastic. Water can carry energetic frequencies, right? Water can actually be organized in a more crystalline structure, and also based on the principles of homeopathy, it can actually carry the frequency of things that have been dissolved in that water or the frequency of energies that that water has been exposed to. So Infopathy, it's this cool company. They make a, a little circular device. You set a glass of water on top of it. It'll charge the water up with anything you want, you know, a paracetam, a digestif, and a nootropic. I even set them my stem cells. They in my stem cells so I can literally drink the 30-year-old me, you know, when I wake up from my afternoon nap, which is kind of cool. We live in a very interesting era. We can do these kind of things. It's similar to like the, like the hat bee downstairs that'll mimic the magnetic frequency of a lot of different molecules, right? Like nicotine or CBD or, or THC or, or caffeine without you actually having to consume that supplement. This is a crazy era that we live in because we can actually simulate a lot of these things that we would normally need via oral digestion using, based on the quote that I gave you yesterday from Nikola Tesla, energy vibrations and frequency. Same thing with the device like, say, the Apollo wearable, right? It's a haptic sensation that can simulate things like, you know, sociability, which is kind of like an MDMA-esque frequency, or, or a feel-good afternoon pick-me-up, which is like theobromine from chocolate. So it's really, really cool to experiment with these devices that actually talk to your body in a different way than oral supplementation does. So, so it's really, really cool. And a lot of these things surprisingly work better based on the principles of entrainment the more often that you use them, especially things like uh, like light sound stimulation, pulse to let it filled frequency, etc. Okay, now, like I mentioned yesterday, I do all my creative work in the morning. Okay, I've identified my, my creativity time to be about 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. or so. So that's when I do all my proactive creative work. I save all the reactive work for the afternoon. By reactive work, I mean making phone calls, replying to emails, and in many, many cases, because I'm a big fan of the 15,000-ish steps a day, and a lot of people don't even get anywhere close to that, but I have a rule that I'll save all that stuff for the afternoon, and then I head out on some farm roads behind my house, and I walk and walk and walk, and I reply to my emails, and I make my phone calls, and if you can hack your life in such a way that you can do some of your work while walking, especially like out in the sunshine, maybe wear some earthing or, or grounding shoes, like some earth runners or, or some plugs or something like that, you can actually feel really, really good in the afternoon. Now, a couple other things I've been using that, uh, of late, because again, this is just my opportunity to fill you guys in on all the cool new stuff. Posture Pro insoles. Uh, this is a great, great little insole that, that helps you to develop proper posture. You can go to their website and look it up. I've, I've got a, the URL I gave you guys yesterday, the title slide. I'll, I'll put it again at the end. I've, I've got some, some, uh, some information on more of this stuff. The other one that's really interesting that I've been using lately is light hand weights. Light hand weights. And uh, this, this this is actually something that, uh, that's very, very effective at getting blood flow pumping. It's a great cardiovascular workout. But what I do is I, I just bought a couple of four-pound hand weights, four-pound hand weights on Amazon. And what I'll do is I'll hold them in my hands. You know, typically I have my phone in my pocket. And so while I'm walking, I have these hand weights on, and it's a great little cardiovascular workout, wonderful way to amp up a walk. The other way that you can amp up a walk, and there's actually a, 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 a vendor down there called Katsu. And these are bands that you can wrap around your arms and your legs like a tourniquet. And they they mimic lifting very heavy weights. I'm a huge fan. I use BFR training or Katsu whenever I'm on the road. I crank out push-ups, squats, lunges, etc. in my hotel room. And the reason for that is it builds up lactic acid in the muscle tissue. And it fools the muscle into thinking that it's lifting a heavy weight. And I don't have to go mess around in like a crappy hotel gym. I don't have to worry about, you know, walking and, and finding a gym. I can just do a full workout right in my hotel room with these BFR straps on. But a lot of times I'll just strap them on and go for a walk. It turns a walk into a really, really really physically stimulating activity. So 
I use the aura ring, of course, to, to quantify my steps. And then the other thing that I use a lot of the time, it's very similar to this, this one hanging next to my, my fancy expensive harmonica, is a, th this is a little device, it's, it's like a straw that you can breathe through. So, so you'd go on a walk and you breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. And it works pretty well, but they make an even better one. I'm not wearing it right now because it's annoying neon green color. And I'm all about the feng shui of my outfit. Uh, but the, uh, the, this other one they call a relaxator. A relaxator. Has anybody used a relaxator before? Okay, yeah, a few folks in here. Developed by Anders Olsen, a great breathwork practitioner. And what it does is it resists the outflow as you exhale. So a lot of times a walk, I'll put the, the uh, relaxator in my mouth. If it's not a walk where I'm on a phone call, resist the exhale, trains you how to do nasal breathing. And oh my goodness, if you were to get like hand weights and go on a walk with that relaxator. These are all things that you can travel with too. And these are just the little things that I do during the day to stay really, really fit and still be able to, you know, to, you know, to make my phone calls and to get work done and to not just be you know, at, the, at the gym all day or whatever. I hack my day to hack breath and hack movement and hack frequency and vibration and energy. So I'm just getting exposed to this stuff all day long. And like I said yesterday, seems like a lot of stuff, but once you begin to implement, it's almost like brushing your teeth. You know, I'm heading on my walk, just hang my relaxator around my neck, grab my hand weights, boom, I'm out, go. Or maybe put on your blood flow restriction band. So this stuff's simple once you, get, once you get a grasp on it. I told you yesterday about the movement snacks that I do throughout the day, all day long, taking little breaks. I, I already exposed you yesterday to GOTA and hyperpressive breathing and core foundation training. And so follow some of the resources that I have in the, in the URL after this presentation if you want to read more about that kind of stuff and the idea of little movement snacks spread throughout the day. Like all, all, the, all the clients that I train online, what, the, like every single day, what I have written for them is movement snacks, movement snacks, movement snacks. And I got about five or six different options. I talk about a, a few of them in my book, Boundless, as well. But what I do is, is I encourage people to build up a repertoire of all sorts of different exercises. Those of you who saw me getting ready for the talk back there, I was doing this one. Okay, I was, I was putting my hands over my head and going right elbow, left knee, left elbow, right knee. Right elbow, left knee, left elbow, right knee. You can also do this in a quadruped position. Like if, if you're down on the ground like this, you can literally extend right arm, left leg, extend left arm, right leg. And the reason that I like doing that stuff during my little Pomodoro breaks throughout the day is it connects the left and the right brain hemispheric activity. So it's very, very useful to kind of keep your brain turned on. You get a little bit of a nitric oxide dump too. And considering the other way to increase left and right brain hemispheric activity is to drop acid, it actually is, is a little bit more convenient. It doesn't keep you up quite so late at night compared to LSD. Okay, so, so we do these little movement snacks. I'll do this all throughout that second part of the day. And typically I'm working until right around 5 or 6 p.m., okay? And then comes the workout. Whoops. Here we, well, actually, for those of you wondering, that is not the squatty potty. I was talking about the squatty potty yesterday. That's not the squatty potty, but it may result in, in similar effects. Uh, okay, so workout. What are some of my go-tos right now for workouts? I mentioned the BFR training. Uh, this that I'm riding on the bicycle right now, has anybody used these new electrical muscle stimulation suits? These things are fantastic. They're like the next frontier in exercise. You know, a ton of people in the U.S. are picking them up and using them right now. The one I'm wearing in that photograph is called a Catalyst. And you pull this suit on, and unlike a lot of the electrode systems that require you to put on all the wired electrodes and place the pads, this one you just put a suit on. You spray the inside of the suit with a little bit of water to be able to, to increase the conduction between the skin and the suit. And it's got like 20 different full body workouts, cardio workouts. One of, one of my favorite workouts of all time is a hop on, on the air bike like this, and I'll ride that bike while the electrical muscle stimulation is pumping through my body, and you trigger new muscles you've never used before. You enhance neural connectivity. This, this EMS training is fantastic. I mean, even in the plane ride on the way over here, I did a whole quad and calves workout by attaching this little thing called a power dot to my quads and my calves. I'll wear this suit sometimes when I'm traveling or when I'm at home exercising. Electrical muscle stimulation gets some, you know, in the, in the fitness industry, some people raise an eyebrow on it because it's like the as seen on TV, six pack abs, you know, eat, eat your Twinkies and put your electrodes on it, you're good to go. And yeah, that, that's, that's a little bit suspect, but this idea of triggering the muscles with electrical stimulation, it's a cheat. It's a true biohack because you can pack on muscle without actually needing to carry around a lot of heavy weight. A few of the other ones that I like to use, of course, kettlebells, any type of, uh, of unconventional or asymmetrical object that you can swing around. I think if you're really serious about fitness and you want the best tool to stay fit for life, take a Russian kettlebell certification or take a Pavel Zatzelin Strong First certification. I do kettlebells with, with my sons 
two to three times a week. I'm convinced that one of the best ways, because I'm in charge, you know, we, we unschool our kids. We homeschool our kids. And I can't do it all. I would love to teach them reading and writing and mathematics. I got the heart of a teacher. As you guys know, like I love to learn stuff and teach stuff. That's what I'm doing right now. But I can't do all the stuff with my kids. I just don't have enough time. But I do make sure that I'm the guy who's in charge of their physical disciplines and their spiritual disciplines. Okay, so I'll, later on I'll show you some of the stuff we do for, for the spiritual side of things. But I'm convinced, like if you have kids, the four best things you can do with those kids on a regular basis, and I've been doing this kind of stuff with my kids since they were four or five years old, is kettlebells, breath work, heat, and cold. Kettlebells, breath work, heat, and cold. Because you're teaching a child how to swing around and yield an asymmetrical object under load and under stress. You're teaching them how to increase heat shock proteins and cellular resistance in the sauna or in the heat. You're teaching them how to manage their nervous system with breath and relaxation in the cold. And then you're giving them that free trigger that we can use to enhance our physiology or kind of turn it up or turn it down a little bit throughout the day. And so if, if, I mean, if you or your kids want just the four best things for physical fitness, in my opinion, it's asymmetrical training, such as with the kettlebell, heat, cold, and breath work. And that's kind of like the core of a lot of the training that I do. If I could throw out all the biohacks, I'd just do that stuff. A couple other ones that I like is the, uh, the super slow single set to failure training. Yesterday, I briefly mentioned the ARX downstairs. Anybody had a chance to try that one out yet? Where, where it, yeah, it does a really good job resisting. Are you sore? You feel, yeah, I did, I did one yesterday. I'm sore. It's amazing. Ten minutes of working out, and it feels like you've been at the gym for two hours. Now, those things are obviously expensive. It's a big unit. You know, a lot of times they're putting them in gyms and stuff. You can get them for your home. But then one that, that, that can kind of sort of give you a similar feel with that super slow single set to failure training is the X3 bar. They're also downstairs. I didn't plan any of this ahead of time, by the way. I, just, I was pleased when I walked through the expo. I'm like, oh, these are a lot of the, the folks that I can talk about in my talk, and people after they hear me talk can maybe go try it out. But the X3 three bar, it's a, it's a very, very special form of an elastic band that allows you to have variable resistance during the entire movement, and you can just do one set of about 10 different exercises two or three times a week and stay incredibly strong with that thing. So I do a lot of single set to failure training, super slow training, because it's a time hack. Right, I used to be a bodybuilder, and I, you know, I had to spend like two hours in the gym, and you know, not to mention put on the, the tanning lotion, and I use the I use the Nair hair removal stuff. So I'm very surprised I haven't gotten skin cancer from all my crazy bodybuilding hacks. But but I don't spend two hours in the gym anymore. I can get in, get out super fast, especially when I'm traveling and I want to get a quick workout in. I'll do this super slow training, X3 bar training, something like the ARX. But very very useful for you to know that we've been a little bit misled by you know Men's Health magazine and Women's Health magazine telling you. You got to do four to five sets of 10 to 12 exercises, this and that. You can literally go in, go heavy, and just do one single set to failure for each exercise, throw in a little high intensity cardio throughout the week. Do a little bit, like I said yesterday, in a fasted state so you upregulate those NAD salvage pathways. And that's just a fantastic way to stay fit as you go through life. The other one that I wanted to mention, you know, these are a lot of the tools I use. Vasper is a cardiovascular machine that, that uh, combines blood flow restriction training with cold, with grounding and earthing and with a full body movement. It'll simulate like a two or three hour run in about 21 minutes. That's also one that I really, really like to use, but it's a little bit more of one of those kind of like expensive biohacks. So I, I warned you guys yesterday at the beginning of the presentation. If you do everything that I said, you'd be really healthy, but you'd also be dirt poor. And, uh, and you'd also have, have a wife like mine who's constantly telling me to throw something out. Okay, and then the, the last one I want to mention at the bottom there. Oh my goodness, I, I discovered this app recently. It's my favorite breathwork app. It's about the only app that I use now for breathwork. It's called the Other Ship app. The Other Ship app. It is a paid app, and I, I don't like a lot of paid apps because it's just kind of a gradual drain. It's like a thousand little paper cuts every time you download one of these paid apps. But this, this Other Ship app, it's worth it. Trust me, it's worth it. I've got no you know, financial you know, investment in them or anything like that, but it's just got the perfect breathwork sessions paired to really good music with really good instructors. It's got anywhere from a two-minute pick-me-up all the way to a, like a deep, like mind-bending, 90-minute holotropic breathwork session. It's a great, great app for learning breathwork and doing breathwork. So that's one that I really like, and I'll do a lot of that in the sauna. Okay, so those are some of the fitness modalities that I use of late. And then let's talk family. So this is my family. You can see we're all wearing our, our family logo, T-shirts and hats and mugs. We're those annoying people you see walking down the street like a little 
Brady Bunch uh, and uh, or the or the uh, the Von Trapp family from the Sand of Music holding hands and skipping through the through the street singing. You know the perfect little logo infused family. But uh, but in all seriousness, we're really really big on legacy. Okay, yesterday we talked about purpose, and, and somebody in the front row they mentioned, oh, the reason that we do all of this is so that we can love others more more fully, so we can make better impact with the purpose that we've been given with our lives. Well, I think one of the greatest purposes that we can have is to raise an impactful young future generation who's going to grow up to make this world a better place. And it, you know, this is, the, this is common in America. I know it's, it's common in Europe as well. The whole rags to riches to rags phenomenon, right? Rags to riches to rags, meaning that we, you know, we, we might be successful. We raise up our kids. They get fed with a silver spoon. They don't get a sense of legacy. There's no family trust. There's no structure in place to pass generational wealth on, to pass on family values. And it really creates this scenario where your, your kids just wind up you know, basically downsliding, and then they have kids, and those kids started all over again. And it's a really, really poor way to build an impactful generation that's going to go on to be a great name. You should be proud of your last name. You should be thinking, okay, how, how can my kids be really, really impactful humans who are going to grow up and, and make even fewer mistakes than I made and make this world a better place? I parent with the philosophy that I'm not raising my children. I'm raising my grandchildren. So everything that I do, I think, gosh, this is what my kids are going to do with their kids. This is what their kids are going to do with their kids. And so, for example, we worked with the foundation in America, that you can work with them if you're anywhere in the world, called the Legato Family Foundation, the Legato Family Foundation, and we have a family constitution, and we have a family crest, and we have a family logo, and we have a family mission statement, and we have a 100-page family playbook, so here's what we do with the kids when they're 8, here's what we do when they're 12, here's when we take them on an adventure, here's when they have the rite of passage, here's the seven values that the Greenfield family stands for, we have a, a giant crest hanging over our fireplace, that's literally our family crest that'll get passed down from generation to generation. You walk up to our house, there's two flags on either side of the door flying the Greenfield family logo. I mean, the reason I'm telling you guys all this, even though it's not really about health optimization, is this is about life optimization. I mean, I, I would, again, in the same way I'd be super pleased if, if all you walked out of here being more productive in the morning and getting better sleep late at night and watching less TV, I'd be super happy if those of you who are parents think, oh gosh, how can I establish a deeper sense of legacy in my kids and develop things like a family logo and a family crest and a mission statement and a playbook. And I tell you what, it's, it's probably one of the best. I'm working on a parenting book right now. It'll come out in the winter. And so that I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm feeding through the fire hose from all these amazing parents that I'm interviewing for the book. And some of the most impactful parents, they all have this practice of some kind of like a, a family tradition, playbook, legacies built in, crest, family trust, really, really cool way to lead your family. So whether you're married and you have kids or whether you plan on having kids or you know somebody with kids, this is the way that us human beings should be raising our children, to passing on wisdom, right? Honoring the elders, gaining information from the elders, and creating a future legacy. And, the, and there's, there's really, really great resources for learning how to do this. I'll put some of them in the notes for this presentation. So I'll give you a few examples just because, again, I'm filling you in on the way that I optimize my life. And a big part of lifestyle optimization is your spiritual health, your soul health, your relationships, your love. That's why there's 110-year-old you know, gin-chugging cigarette-smoking grandmas in Sardinia, Italy, living until they're you know, well into the the centenarian ages despite not doing a lot of these biohacks because they have love, they have relationships, they have family. So this stuff is important too. This is a direct transfer to health. You shouldn't do it to make you healthy. You should do it to love other people, but a cool natural byproduct of it is it is going to make you a better person physically, mentally, and spiritually. So what do we do? We gather around. Every single night at the Greenfield House is like a party. It's like a party. We all work our asses off all day long, and we're a big fan. Like one of our mantras in the Greenfield House, we work hard, we play hard. So we work really hard all day long, nose to the grindstone, very little distractions. Me, my wife, my kids, we all get down to business, and we go out and live our life's purpose. We all know our life's purpose. We have it memorized. It's the lens through which we do all of our activities during the day. And then once about Oh, 7 p.m. or so rolls around. Done with that afternoon workout. Maybe I've jumped in the ice bath, finished a breath work session with my kids. We all gather as a family every night, seven nights a week. You know, occasionally there's some exceptions. We have some people over. Or there, there's something going on, or we decide to go out to a restaurant. But I always read the family some book. I always take the family through a book. So I'm always reading a chapter and passing on wisdom to my children and my wife each week. We sing a song, right? So we do a little worship. We do a little prayer. We do a little breath work. Those of you who were at the, at the party last night at the biohacking facility, h 2 Amen. We, we, we did breath work and intention setting and gratitude there. That's our house every single night. 
okay? So every single night, we're dedicating the, the final meal, the final party that we, that, we, that we throw to the creator who blessed us with all that. So we sing a song, we do a prayer, and we do some breath work. And then dinner is, again, like a big party. There's, there's, there's no devices, there's no screens. We play board games, we play card games. Again, for those of you who are parents, one of the best investments that we do on a monthly basis is I take my sons to Barnes & Noble, which is a game bookstore in the United States, and it's the best 25 bucks that I spend all year because I'll pay 25 bucks for a board game and it gives us tons of family fun for the whole month. You ought to see our game closet. It's crazy. It's like the closet that you open and stuff just comes tumbling out. Like literally dozens and dozens and dozens of board games and card games and activities. And this is every single night at our house. And it's amazing because our children are learning things like rhetoric and logic and, and human interaction and reading and writing and arithmetic, not at school, but right there playing games as a family. Okay, these are all things to think about when it comes to your own personal health is how are you treating your family? How are you raising your kids? Now, I mentioned yesterday that I'm basically kind of a nose-to-tail carnivore guy. My carbohydrate sources are mostly tubers and berries and honey. Now, one of the things that I do, I've done this for a long time. I still do it. I know that there are some folks in the circadian rhythm biology and nutrition field who would disagree with me. So screw you. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but but this, this works out really well for me, honestly. I save all my carbohydrates for the end of the day. So the whole day long, I'm in a state of ketosis, state of nutritional ketosis, eating all fatty acids, vegetables, proteins, training my body how to be a fat-burning machine. And then at the very end of the day, I will actually consume the lion's share of the day's carbohydrates. And that socks away my liver and muscle glycogen levels for the next day so that I can get through a workout or whatever else I want to do. It gives my thyroid enough carbohydrates, gives my testosterone enough to go around, helps to build the proteoglycans in my joints. But then after I have that evening carbohydrate feed, I don't have any more carbohydrates for 24 hours until dinner time the next day. The cool thing is having your carbohydrates with dinner instead of breakfast will also enhance your production of serotonin, which is an upregulator of melatonin. Okay, so it helps you to sleep a little bit better too. Now some people say, oh, you're more insulin sensitive in the morning, so in the morning that's when you should have your carbohydrates. Now here's the thing, that is true, but you can induce a state of artificial insulin hypersensitivity in the evening as well if at at some point in the couple of hours leading up to dinner, you do a strength training session or a high intensity interval training session or even two to four minutes of a cold soak is enough to induce a really, really good amount of, of glycemic sensitivity. And then I'll always have some form of a blood glucose disposal agent prior to dinner. Now I use a, a bitter melon extract that's, that's in the, the key on lean stuff. You can use berberine. If you're traveling, you can do a shot of apple cider vinegar. You can do a couple teaspoons of Ceylon cinnamon, even a little bit of lemon juice. But any of these kind of like bitter digestive like compounds, what they do is they enhance your body's ability to be able to lower its blood glucose. A lot of you have asked me what this is on my arm. It's a continuous blood glucose monitor, okay? I don't wear this all the time, but the sensor lasts for 14 days. So I'll slap this on about once every couple of months and it gives me a really, really good grasp of how my body is doing managing blood sugar. And I can tell you right now, just my own personal experimentation and looking at the values of a lot of my clients who wear these things, the two best things you can do to stay really, really carbohydrate sensitive all day long, number Number two, like the like second one down is weight training, literally resistance training, because it empties your muscle glycogen levels so efficiently. And the, the top of the totem pole is cold. If you do some form of cold therapy before you, you know, have your Twinkies and your cereal and your wonderful whole grain bagels, you're going to actually see a lot lower blood glucose response. But still don't eat whole grain bagels because they're pretty, pretty crappy for you. All right, so uh, another one. This, this, is, this is one that I picked up from my friend, a great medical practitioner in the U.S., Dr. Matthew Cook. He said, Ben, you know, he, he, he works with a lot of people with SIBO and digestive issues and constipation and, and gut problems. And so what he put together for his patients was he does a chia seed slurry. Does anybody do this? You soak a little bit of chia seeds in water. makes a gel-like water format that's just wonderfully nourishing to the gut. But it really, really helps the bowel movement the next morning. And what you do is you take about four prunes, right, and about a half cup of soaked chia. And you put a little bit of minerals in there. I actually like to use the, the quinton stuff, the quinton hypertonic minerals that are, that are downstairs. You stir that all together. And basically, that's what I'll have a lot of times if I'm not having that jello, the homemade gelatin-based jello that I talked about. Usually for me after dinner, to get me out of the mode of, you know, like lurching for something sweet, dark chocolate or ice cream or carrot cake. Gosh, I love carrot cake. That, that's, that's not true. If there's carrot cake, I eat it. I, I have zero willpower when it comes to carrot cake. I'll eat, I'll eat the whole cake. I'm not kidding. Uh, but anyways, the chia seed slurry, the minerals, and the prunes, that's a great, great little thing to have, especially if you have difficulty with the morning bowel movement. I mean, game changer as far as cleaning out, but also really 
really satiates the appetite and gives you a nice slow bleed of amino acids and glucose in your bloodstream while you sleep. So I just you know, buy some organic dried prunes, make the chia seed slurry, put it in the cup, drop the four prunes in, do a little bit of minerals, and it's an amazing little nighttime tonic. So if, so if you struggle with like a morning bowel movement, things like that, try this. Cleans you out and it feels really good. Uh, and then we all clean the kitchen together, you know, listen to some music. And uh, then comes our bedtime activity. And for bedtime, very, very similar. This idea of, you know, how you're raising your children is how your children are going to raise their children. We do a story. So I always read a bedtime story, some kind of a book or some kind of a, a fairy tale or anything. You know, my sons are 14 years old now, and I always wonder, gosh, are they, am I just doing this for me? Do they even enjoy me reading this story? They just doubt, get out of their freaking room and quit reading them, you know, whatever, Pilgrim's Progress or whatever I'm reading to them. The thing is, they actually like it. I told them, as soon as you guys get sick of me telling you stories, you just tell me and I'll stop reading you stories. We do story time every night at our house. We gather around, and then we do our final evening meditation. I told you that in the morning we do, does anybody remember what we do in the morning for meditation? It's two things. Starts so gratitude and service, right? What are you grateful for and who's one person who you can pray for or help or serve today? Then in the evening, we, we return back to our journals, the spiritual disciplines journals. And in the evening, what we do is a self-examination where we close our eyes and we replay the whole day like a movie in our mind, watching ourselves in the third person and asking ourselves, what good did that character do today? What could that character have done better today? Meaning where did they perhaps fail and what failures can they learn from? And then what activity did that person do today that was most purpose-filled? So this evening process of self-examination really helps you understand those things that really satisfy your life's purpose. It can even help you develop a purpose statement if you don't already have one. But then the other thing this process of self-examination does is it makes every day stack to get a little bit better and better. I'll give you an example. Like I love music. I love music. For, for the neuroplasticity that develops. I love learning new musical instruments to be able to grow my brain. Doing new things is one of the best way to keep your brain young. But I found myself, it was a couple months ago, for like five days in a row, I was writing, I wish I'd have played my guitar today. You know, I failed at playing my guitar today. And I got five days into that, and I thought, I'm never going to write this in my journal again. And I'll even pick up my guitar for two minutes after dinner just to make sure I get something in. And that's just a tiny example of how this stuff stacks. So you learn a lot about yourself. It only takes like three to five minutes. That you get really good at the visualization. You play your whole day like a movie in your mind. And it's a really, really great way to grow as a person, this evening process of self-examination. And then we say a prayer. And then I take some Valium and go to bed. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. So let's get to sleep. That's a total pose shot because you can see it's the middle of the day. Um, okay, so, uh, and that's not a giant nipple coming off my chest. That's, 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 that's uh, uh, unashamed product placement. All right, so I told you yesterday the circadian rhythm begins in the morning with as much bright light as possible. But in the evening, it's basically turning your entire home into the equivalent of a torch-lit cave. Okay, all the lights go off, red incandescent light bulbs in all the sleeping areas of the house. I have that red headlamp that I talked about. I wear the blue light blocking red glasses. Again, remember, we're living in a post-industrial era where we're fighting an evolutionary mismatch against things like high-level overhead flicker, LED lighting, fluorescence, etc. So to have really good circadian rhythms, we've got to figure out ways to battle this stuff. So red incandescent lighting... A new one for me is Key on Sleep. I just launched that product like two months ago, and I did it to scratch my own itch. I always had like, like five or six different supplements I had to take at night to like kind of get me to sleep. I mean, anybody, anybody kind of feel like that? Like you're like, oh, I got to take this and this and this, and then, and then if I wake up in the morning, I got to take this. So this Key on Sleep stuff, it's basically theanine, uh, GABA, and a really special form of HTP all blended together, and I take three of those, and I'm out in like 15 minutes. If I wake up in the middle of the night, I can pop three more. It works fantastically. The only thing I do when I'm traveling is I throw in CBD and then high-dose melatonin. When I travel, and I did it here, first night I got here, melatonin sledgehammer, 700 milligrams of melatonin. It's a lot of melatonin, but it's a great way to reboot your circadian rhythm. Same thing, when I get home to the U.S. on Wednesday night, I'll take another 600, 7 milligram, 700 milligrams of melatonin. It's a great natural anti-inflammatory. It helps you to get through a time zone shift, and I realize it's a lot of melatonin. You don't do this for life, right? You'd probably decrease a little bit of your natural melatonin production if you did that much melatonin every day. But as a sleep hack for travel, 
I'll use the key on sleep, but then I'll toss in when I'm traveling or on a very stressful day, CBD, and then definitely when I'm traveling, melatonin. Uh, there's a lot of different forms of CBD. I think full spectrum is best. Full spectrum, it seems to be the one with the higher amounts of CBN, CBG, CBD, and, and compared to some of the isolates, I think it does a really, really good job for sleep. I use a brand called, called Element Health right now for CBD, even though there's obviously a billion CBD brands out there. Chili pad, they're, they're down here, circulates 55 degree cold water on your body while you're asleep, so you don't get the meat sweats. It's amazing. You can, you can put it on a high temperature, on a low temperature, and I've got that stacked on top of a body balance PEMF mat, right? So the whole time I'm sleeping at night, my body's getting blasted with PEMF because that PEMF mat will stay on for 12 hours, but that charge is going up through the cold water, which actually magnifies the frequency. So while I'm laying down in bed at night, I'm getting charged with frequency, the equivalent of sleeping on the ground, like earthing and grounding, but at a much higher power. And then I'm also getting the chili pad circulating the cold water underneath my body, and it's just like the best sleep setup ever. I'm a, I'm a total sleep princess, and I love to just set up my whole body for optimized sleep. I'll typically diffuse a really relaxing oil like lavender or rose or bergamot. I always keep a little transdermal magnesium next to the bedside to get a little bit of magnesium charged up in my body. And then I'll use some of these devices I've already talked about with the nap. Apollo, Hat B, Brain FM, Newcom. Brain FM, that's, a, that's one that you can play and you don't need headphones in. You play it in the room and it'll, it'll be a Bluetooth speaker or from your phone if your phone's in airplane mode. And they got a couple deep sleep sessions on there that work really, really well. You can play the whole night long. I actually play, like back in my hotel room here, I got the Brain FM, I put it on. And I'm a big fan of when you travel, conditioning your body with the same noises that you have at home because it lulls your body into this state of safety. So the more you you can simulate your sleep system at home when you're on the road, you're going to sleep a lot better. And sound and smells are a great way to do that. So I travel with lavender, and I'll travel with this Brain FM on my phone app so I get the sounds and the smells that are similar to what I get at home, which really helps with sleep. And the very last thing, before my head hits the pillow, I roll over, I say a prayer with my wife, and we fall asleep. And usually that's like 9.30, 9.45. And uh, that, that is the Greenfield Day. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> oh, yeah, time to spare. <laughs> Yay, us. Um, so the resources are at Ben Greenfield Life slash HOS22. And I want to take some questions. We're going to do a little Q&A. We've got 10 minutes or so for Q&A. I always like to start with the first question. I'll start with the first question. What's well, yellow and really hurts when it hits you in the eye? A bulldozer or a school bus, yeah. I like that school bus, yeah. All right, no, but seriously, let's let's do some real questions. So, uh, yes, you right there in the front row. Whoever, I'll go ahead. Yeah, fight. Um, do your kids do strength training or just kettlebells? Because uh, I've heard about um, kids' stunted growth doing heavy weights. Yeah, the the kids like the epiphys. Uh, the, 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 it's the uh, it's, it's the, the growth plate compression, right? Is is what they get concerned about with kids and heavy weights. But that really hasn't been borne out in literature, especially once you're up into adolescence. So my kids do strength training, but it's primarily with a kettlebell. You're still loading those growth plates with a kettlebell, you know, when you're in this position or when you're in this position. So they do strength training, but it's primarily with a kettlebell. And then what I do is every Sunday night, I sit down, I write out all the workouts for my sons and I to do during the week, and then I email that to them so they got it on file, I got it on file. But a lot of it is strength training, and it, it's, it's fine, especially for adolescents. It's not going to stunt their growth unless they're severely malnourished or something like that. So, well, so don't starve your kids and give them a yeah, kettlebell. I should have been six foot, but... What's that? I, I, I did weight training when I was 10. And, yeah, and, and look we, how short you are. I know. Jeez. <laughs> Didn't work out for you. Sorry. All right. Yes, sir. How about right here? Anything that you've not mentioned uh, that you would include for post-surgery recovery? For post-surgery recovery, oh gosh, there's a lot of stuff that you could do. I think that probably the, if you could choose four modalities, like two would be technologies, infrared light and pulsed electromagnetic field frequency. Those two can accelerate healing really, really dramatically. So I'd recommend those as far as technologies. And then as far as like supplements, probably a top three would be some form of really bioavailable collagen or gelatin some kind of essential amino acid supplement to give your body a lot of the building blocks that it needs without creating a lot of digestive distress, especially because a lot of times you can't move as much post-surgery, so you don't want to eat a lot of calorically rich you know, steaks and things like that for your protein. So essential amino acids and then high-dose vitamin C, which has been used since you know, surgeons in World War II were using high-dose vitamin C to help their patients recover more quickly. And those are a few that work, work really well. Thank you. Yes. I'm not a doctor. I just play one on TV. So say you had sort of 
hundred bucks, what would be your go to sort of hack things to purchase for sort of yeah, less than a hundred bucks basically? Uh, cigarettes and a fifth of good <laughs> vodka. Um, so a hundred bucks. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's it, it's it's tricky. I I would say. Gosh, a hundred dollars, and and what would the goal be? Like fitness or longevity or something that's going to improve your life for a hundred bucks? I would say I would spend all the money on stuff that would make your walks better because I think walking is one of the best things for life. So get some little hand weights, you know, get get the relaxator device, maybe get some some uh, you know some blood flow restriction bands. That right there is going to add up to maybe sixty sixty five bucks. So so I just saved you thirty five dollars that you can use <laughs> somewhere else on a Nice, nice ribeye steak or something. All right, yes, sir. Yesterday we heard something about Bluetooth. What do you think about the Auring or Whoop band? Oh, yeah. I mean, like my my criteria for any of these technologies is they must have the ability to be turned into airplane mode. And if I can't, I won't use them. Okay, so the Apollo, I will switch it in airplane mode. Hat B, I put it in airplane mode. My Aura Ring, I put it in airplane mode. My phone, when I'm sleeping, is in airplane mode. So if I can't enable airplane mode, I don't use it. Bluetooth is a little less problematic, but there's still some evidence that it might cause a little bit of red blood cell clumping. I personally know that when I'm wearing like AirPods, which I don't go near, my brain just feels fuzzy by the end of the day. So I avoid those things like the plague. Like my my home's a total stupid home, not a smart home. Like all the all the technology is disabled. And if something comes with Wi-Fi and I don't know how to disable it, I'll contact the manufacturer and, and figure out how I can actually turn Wi-Fi off on it. And if it can't be disabled, it's out. And what do you think about sleeping in the tent? What kind of underground you would use when you would sleep in the tent? What kind of underground? Yeah. You could use the same setup, like a Faraday cage. Yeah. Yeah. Faraday cages are amazing, by the way. I, what I do when I travel is I just travel with like a Faraday cage blanket, which is easy. It folds up in my bag, and I can just hop into the hotel bed, and I just pull that over me over the regular blanket. It works pretty well. You, you can even put it over your head. So, yeah. Keeps the, the uh, mosquitoes off, too. A lot of, mosquito, a lot of big mosquitoes running around London. All right, let's, let's, do, let's do a few more questions. How are we doing on time? Uh, about five minutes. Five minutes. All right, cool. Let's keep going. I'll let you pick. Yeah, yeah, you got the microphone. I'll be faster. Just a question with homeschooling. The kids are obviously with the family a lot of the time. About how, how do you um, allow them or facilitate them connecting with, you know, friends? They don't. They're very antisocial, little barefoot truants that don't play well with others. They bite other kids a lot, so it's kind of embarrassing. Now, they, they do so many extracurriculars. Oh, my gosh, jiu-jitsu and tennis and wilderness survival class and pottery class and art trips and, you know, group jumping at the trampoline park. I mean, they see kids all the time. It's not an issue at all. Like this, this idea that parents think, oh, my kids have to go to school to get socialized. No, if anything, your kids should go to school and get educated if that's the reason that they're going to school. You're in charge of the socialization, not the school. Right, if, if, if the reason your kids are going for school is for the social life, in my opinion, that's the equivalent of when people go to college to, you know, to, to learn how to, how to drink and meet members of the opposite sex for four years and waste a lot of money. I, th I think the same thing about, about the average, normal, modern-day school. It's just an excuse for your kids to socialize and learn in a very outdated educational system. Yeah. Yes, sir. Or over there, over there. Sorry, that's right. You're picking on me. Uh, what would you advise to someone who wants to find a purpose? Is it always r connected to your passion? Yeah. Yeah, how do you find your purpose in life? There, there's, you know, the, obviously, we talked for an hour about how to find your purpose in life, but I boil it down to very simplistic terms. Think about what it is that you do now that makes time go by quickly. Right? For me, it's a blank page. I can, I can pull up a blank page and start writing, and I'll look at my watch and feel like it's been 20 minutes. It's been two hours. Okay? So figure out what it is for you that makes time go by quickly. What is it that you really liked to do when you were a kid? Okay, that's usually a really, really good clue about the kind of things that you were built for to be most purposeful now. And as my, as my friend uh, Mark Manson says, he's, he's the author of, uh, uh, oh, what's the name of his, his F word book? Uh, the, the, the Subtle Art of Not Giving Enough. Yeah, he, he, he says, do things that make you forget to eat and poop. All right, so, so usually your purpose is, is somewhat linked to things that make you forget to eat and poop. And that's a good place to start, but there's also a great book called uh, Claim Your Power by Mass and Kip. That one's a really good one for finding life's purpose. And then a new one that just came out a couple of months ago that's fantastic for purpose finding is called Ikigai 2.0. And you can find that on the website slow.co, S-L-O-W-W dot C-O. Yes. Hi, I just wanted to ask, why is it that you advocate a low-protein diet I don't advocate a low-protein diet. Someone I, read uh, I, Boundless. 
So No, no, I advocate what might be considered a low-protein diet compared to the average meathead. But, I mean, 0.55 to 0.8 grams of protein per pound of body weight per day is not a low-protein diet, and that's what I recommend. Usually close to 0.8 grams per pound for the more active people, close to 0.55 grams per pound. I'll let you guys do the kilogram conversion because I suck at math. But basically, I mean, it's, 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 that's not a low-protein diet. I never have advocated a low-protein diet. Now, I do advocate having certain periods of the year where you're doing protein fasting to downregulate mTOR, but that would just be on like a quarterly basis, doing like a four- to five-day uh, fasting-mimicking diet or water fast or bone broth fast or vegetable fast, but that's not every day. So, no, I, I'm not an advocate of a low-protein diet. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, Ben. What do you think we're all going to be doing in 10 years? Like, look at all this today and everything you presented. Amazing, right? And I've been listening to you for about 10 years already, so I've seen where okay. you've come from. So what are we all going to be doing in 10 years? What are you going to be doing in 10 years? Oh, we're all going to have brain cancer in 10 years from all the stem cells. <laughs> um, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, what am I going to be doing in 10 years? Do you mean from like a health optimization, longevity standpoint? Yeah, what's yeah, I, 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 I actually think, and this is what I would hope, that people are actually going to become more analog, but at the same time, I think there's going to be a rift between people who are getting out in nature, learning how to plant forage, walking in the sunshine, rock climbing, grounding, swimming in the ocean, and then there's going to be the metaverse people who are working out and having sex with their Oculus Rift on, you know, and just basically living their entire life in Web 3.0. Right? And so, and I don't know about you, but if the zombie apocalypse happens, I'd much rather be the person who can survive out in the forest with a knife and a wool blanket and, you know, some leather shoes than I would be the person who, who can't figure out how to turn my, you know, my virtual reality technology on. So I think, I think we're going to see a rift, and I encourage people, like, go analog as much as possible. Yeah, let's go one no, more question. Last question, yeah. Hey, how you doing? Sorry, mate. I'm off to uh, the States next month, and I got a my second vaccine. Did you say you're off to space? Sp <laughs> the States, US. Oh, the States. And they require a vaccination, and a couple of days ago, I, I got one, and I, I had, I'd done some research a year ago, um, six months ago, and then since then, I've just come across a lot of stuff saying the vaccination is probably really not good for me, and I've got pins and needles in my arms today. I'm feeling stuff uh -huh. as well. Is there anything I can do? For, what's your view on that? And is there anything I can do to recover? from that? Have I made a big mistake, do you think? Yeah, I mean... <laughs> Fair, I stay a little bit PC here. I don't want this, this talk sure. to get banned off of YouTube. Um, yeah, you made a big mistake. Um, how... Unless, 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 unless you're, you're, if you're immunocompromised or elderly, maybe you didn't make a big mistake, but you don't look like the kind of guy to me who would need to be vaccinated. Anyways, though, um, yeah, there are things that you can do. You should go listen to my interview with Peter McCullough, because Peter and I talk about a lot of the strategies that can be used to mitigate some of the deleterious effects of vaccination. And so I'd, I'd listen to that interview, because I'd go over a lot more than I could in this brief period of time. Go so ahead. thanks. Thanks very yeah. much. Yep. No problem. At least you got the t-shirt.